Hey, what's up, phone lovers? Welcome to the Mobile Roar Podcast for the week of October 6, 2016. I am Joe Fidua. I am Chris Chavez. And I'm Ashley Keating from a new location. There Welcome is. back. I know, it's been a while. Just like a month now. It probably has been a month because we didn't have a podcast last week. Yeah. And you hadn't been on a couple weeks before that, so welcome back. Good to have yeah. you back. Plenty to talk about, too. I'm excited to be back. But I do have to mention one thing before the podcast. Chris was eating chips with rubber gloves. Just just wanted there, to put that out. It there. was. And it wasn't chips. It Blue was Hawaiian. Blue surger- surgical gloves. Wait, it wasn't chips? What were you eating? It was Hawaiian bread. It has like a slight buttery feel to it and i don't want to you know get it on my <laughs> so if anyone knows the hotline to like a number like ocd uh, anonymous or germaphobe it's anonymous it's it's, uh, it's either gloves or just continually like just washing my hands after i touch anything and it's, it's not like, continually you eat your food you wash your hands that's, that's just too much like they get so dry <laughs> so. the gloves are just so nice so convenient it's great. All right. So someone in our live chat already said before we even start the podcast, let the pixel bashing begin. This is the pixel bashing podcast. Let's I don't think it's going to be the pixel bashing contest podcast, but there is a lot of that going around the internet right now. Yes. Uh, Chris, you were at the pixel event, so we will let you kick things off. Tell us a little bit about that. I was there. I was there unofficially. Um, it was in San Francisco, of course, and it was um, pretty interesting. We had lots of leaks ahead of time, so we kind of knew what to expect. Um, and yeah, there kind of was no surprises once we finally, <laughs> everything was said and done and announced. Uh, and I feel like maybe that's kind of kind of maybe what skewed people's opinions and such. Um, I don't know. Lots of stuff, but Pixels are announced. You got the Pixel, Pixel XL, Chromecast Ultra, Google Home. Finally has a release date. Uh, What else was there? Let's just focus on the Pixels right now. Okay, so let's go with Pixels. Pixels are cool. They uh, are smartphones. They are the first ones to debut with Google Assistant, and that's kind of their their big draw right now. That and and the really good camera hardware that Google claims they've, like, completely designed and chosen and just tweaked and stuff um which seems pretty nice on on paper everything's there it's four gigabytes of ram battery is a little bit on the, sh- the smallish side uh amoled displays i mean it's a it's a phone it's a smartphone um the battery's pretty decent on the xl though yeah on the xl yeah, it is. <clears throat> and that, that kind of sucks for small phone lovers is like we kind of usually get the short end of the stick so i'm I'm sort i'm sort of just accustomed to it uh if you do want like better battery life you always got to get these these big phones for some odd reason um the phones i will say they felt a little cheapish in the hand that's Uh, not good yeah apparently yeah yeah, hcc is manufacturing it but they, I mean, you won't find any of the brandy and HTC brand anywhere on the phone or anything like that because Google says they've, uh, they're the ones, they're the ones that have made the phone and tailored it to their exact specifications and stuff. Um, but like the aluminum, like they're deceptively light. I feel like when you pick it up, you're like, holy cow, this is like almost like air. And then the aluminum that you know surrounds it, it just feels very. Uh, when you tap on it, it doesn't feel very like solid. It just feels like almost like hollow. Like the inside is just plastic or something, and it's just like they wrap tin foil around it. Um, so it's they, they. I wouldn't say they feel expensive, but I mean this is Google's Google's phone made by them, and it's uh, the next. It's basically the Nexus. It's Nexus with with all of Google's extra extra fixins and and whatnot. Um, they're really fast. <laughs> yeah, well, Snapdragon eight twenty one first yeah. phones with that, I believe. Yeah, so um, which is kind of weird because uh, on Google's page or whatever they say like the the gigahertz are they like they're only like two point whatever when like a Snapdragon eight twenty one can potentially go up to like a two point five or something according to Qualcomm's page, 
which is interesting. So they kind of like underclocked them down to what a Snapdragon 820 would have been. But I mean, the 821, I'm sure there's other improvements and stuff there as well. Um, but the the phones looked cool. I don't, do yeah, you know? it's basically like Google is now another Android OEM where yeah. they actually have their own stuff that they're just going to have on their phones. Um, just sort of like, you know, TouchWiz phones have their own things that you won't get on any other phone. Google phones yeah. are going to have their own things. I think that's what's kind of confusing people, a lot of people, because they're seeing this as like, like the Nexus brand is officially dead. This is Google's new thing. And for years, people have been, you know, demanding and like saying, why doesn't Google just make their own phones? And and then Google makes their own phones. And then people are like, why don't they make a better phone? And it's like, it's just so, it's so incredibly frustrating. But what people don't understand is that, yes, this is like, this is Google's phone and it's stock Android. But they're showing, in a way, they're showing uh, like all these other manufacturers how to make a skin or how to make a version of Android right. You put all your stuff into it and you make it yours, but you don't have to like change everything around. I mean, they have their own circular icons, which is kind of whatever. Uh, Honestly, I don't even think they care about showing other OEMs like what Android should be anymore. Hmm. It seems like that's probably what the Nexus was, but I really just think they're like, we're just going to make our own phone. And it's it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, and it could in a way, it's, it's sort of like a, they, they, they had to do it and it's, it's like a direct uh, answer to like the iPhone. I mean, Apple is making their stuff. Nexus, I mean, I don't know why they couldn't just continue with the Nexus and why they felt like they had to make a separate pixel and then add more, even more Google stuff in. Um, that part is still a little bit fuzzy. I feel What's like it's crazy to me is like, all right, Ashley, you have the Nexus 6P and apparently you won't be able to get Google Assistant. Initially. It's not coming to the Nexus 6P. It's not coming to Nexus phones, they said, like initially, which is like... Anytime that makes no the sense. words that they used. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, I think it's still too early to kind of figure out what the heck is going to go, what's happening with the Nexus stuff and like what's going to happen in the future with them. Um I mean, there's some things like the they they want to debut some of these new features and stuff on their phone specifically, but I mean, I I could see them bringing you know Google Assistant and all this stuff to Nexus phones like in the in the future. But maybe maybe it's just too much. Like like the Nexus, our Google Assistant is just too I don't invasive. Think they will at all. And it's I don't and I don't know if they can like maybe there's some like weird antitrust laws or something where they can't like like they need a stock version of android and google assistant is so like it's just too much google um to really put into a nexus because at what point does a nexus phone just start becoming you know a, a google pixel phone a google phone um well nexus, I mean, the nexus phones were never aosp True. I mean, that's what we started seeing—the sort of the sort of like deviation. And then I think that's what like eventually Google was like, okay, we can't just keep calling them Nexuses because they're they're starting to not become Nexus anymore. Yeah. Let's just let's make a Pixel phone. We'll just make our own phone. Let's call the Pixel. We'll design it. We'll just put even more Google stuff in there. Um, and then I think that's maybe what what came about with these phones. It's clear to me watching the event that they want to have a phone that is a Google phone because they kept saying um, Google Assistant is, or Pixel is the first phone to have Google Assistant built in. Like they specifically said built in about a couple software features. Like software is not built in for Yeah, one. and it's kind of like <laughs> what, like why... Why not bring really this, deal about it? Why not bring this to more phones? Why not allow you know a Google Assistant to work on more stuff? And I mean, if Google Assistant is all that it claims to be, you kind of want this on, on as many Android devices as possible. So it's just sort of weird that I don't know. They're kind of they want they want Google Assistant to be successful, obviously, but the fact that they're kind of just like walling it into just Pixel stuff is a little bit is a little bit odd. And then the only way to get it on other Android phones is through Aloe. Aloe, yeah. So, yeah. 
Um, so yeah, Ashley, you have the next six B, like I mentioned. Do you have do you feel like they gave you any reason to even consider upgrading? No, I was excited about the presentation and going into it. I mean, they spent the first, what, 15 minutes talking about Google Assistant. And I was the whole time I'm thinking this is just an allo. And I don't, I don't really care about having it built in. Yeah, Google Assistant's weird because they've talked about it. <laughs> Sorry. They've talked about it a lot lately. And so it's like they keep repeating themselves at these events. Yeah. Yeah. Um... They've, I mean, with like a Google I.O., we already saw everything that Google Assistant is, you know, supposed to be and where it's supposed to come um, or where it's supposed to go and all this stuff. And, you know, Sundar was on stage and was talking about how the future of, you know, just tech and everything is going to be AI and the future of Google is AI and, you know, Google being able to figure out all your likes and everything and bring them to you in this conversational way and, um, that's kind of where Google is headed. And I guess that's why they needed to make a phone to do that. Um, even though you can kind of make it, you can, you know, it's, it's just like an app. I feel like it's just like almost like Google voice search, but one that's a little more, has a little more personality and can get sassy with you. And yeah, uh, is a little, almost a little more like Siri. I feel like this is Google's, Google's version of Siri. That's what a that. lot of people were saying, like tweeting during the event when they were showing off the Google Assistant stuff. They're like, you know, how many people know that Google now could do half of this stuff already? Yeah. <laughs> and I but feel like, I, I mean, maybe like, I, like my mom and my dad, I don't know if they've ever tried using like a Google voice action or doing whatever. I mean, I use it for like, hey, set my alarm or hey, set the timer. That's kind of it. But like with Google Assistant, they want to branch out. You know, they want to bring more people. You know, Uber, you can say, you know, call an Uber for me or get me a ride or make a reservation at this restaurant. Like all that stuff seems pretty cool too. Um, and it's just, I think with the, the whole, it being an assistant is a little more appealing and will be to people. Like, oh, okay, this is like my own personal assistant. I can tell it to do something and it'll do it for me. Um, and then, you know, with developers integrating it with their apps and stuff, it's going to be pretty cool. I think it's going to be great. Google Assistant seems like it's going to be awesome in the future. I think right now it's just, it's, it's a little um, early. Um, but it's, I don't know if that's going to be the biggest draw to even buy a Pixel, though. Like I don't, and it seems like that's the only really differentiating factor is like, why should I buy a Pixel? It's got, it's got Google Assistant built in. But is that like enough? Is that enough incentive? So after playing with the phones, do you think the because the price tag is a big deal? Six fifty is the X set or is the Pixel, and then seven seventy or something is the XL. Um, do you think after playing with them that they're worth that price? Um, <laughs> probably not. Um, but like I said, I was kind of expecting. I think there's for some people it was sort of like sticker shock or whatever. They they were just like ah, I was expecting like a low cost reasonably priced smartphone um but for me i mean we saw with like google glass and stuff i mean that was like fifteen hundred dollars and it's just like with this google these google products it's not really surprised with the pixel name though because like the pixel tablet was expensive the yes. pixel laptop this is a trend they started with yeah everything everything google has made has been has been expensive um <laughs> And it's never really, it's never really changed. That's what history has taught us. The Nexus Q, I think the only real like um, affordable stuff was like the Chromecast or like the, um, what was the other one? The Chromecast and the, uh, oh, like Nexus 4 and Nexus 5. Those were like very budget oriented, but um, I mean, this isn't even a Nexus phone anymore and they're not looking, you know, to LG to make this semi high end phone. This is literally made by Google, so I was expecting it to be expensive from from the start. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it sells. I mean, there yeah. uh, I wrote a post earlier today, an analyst is predicting three to four million uh, units will be sold uh, before the end of this year, which is not terrible, but not great either. And yeah. I don't really know how you even make a prediction, but exactly. How do you that's I mean, what I they guess say. based on maybe pre-orders or something? But um, I mean, it's, and then Google just, said they're in this for the long haul, so they're they they already. What was it? David Burke 
was saying that he's already testing the next version of the Pixel, next year's Pixel. He's already got it. He's already playing around with it. So that's kind of one of the benefits you see to Google having this control over smartphones. I don't know if that's, it's not fully realized in this generation of Pixels, but I think down the line you'll start seeing more like, oh, okay, I get it. Um, like, you know, with Google making their own processors and, you know, having all this extra control over smartphones. This one is just kind of like the first, first little step uh, but I mean, I'm going to buy it just because I love, I love Android devices. I need a small, a small, awesome Nexus, and I didn't get that with the Nexus 5X. So yeah. I'm like 100% getting the small, the small Pixel. So someone in our uh, live chat said, uh, "Is the iPhone worth the price?" No, and I would agree. True. M- phones aren't really worth that price anymore when you consider like one plus three and stuff like that but the iphone has the uh reputation of being a great phone that people like so people will pay it it's different when like you come out with a brand new thing and it's like no one even knows what it's about and you're like okay now pay as much as you would for this trusted and known brand yeah. I think the reason that Google is charging so much for their Pixel devices too is because they have that 24 chat that's built in now. Like you don't have to take your phone to a genius or you just tap on your phone and say, yo, what's wrong with my phone? Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, and like, you, like that's kind of the, the draw I feel like with Apple stuff too is you have the Apple store, you have that great service. You know, you, if you have problems with your iPhone, you can walk in to the genius bar. So there's like all that stuff that Apple kind of sells to you that's included in that sticker price, which is already kind of high end. I mean, it's like the same argument for any, any kind of luxury brand. And I feel like that's what Apple is. It's a luxury smartphone brand. Um, And whether or not that's worth it. I mean, I I guess no, you know, like a $50 Gucci t-shirt isn't really worth it. It's, you know, or a Kanye West sweater. Yeah. It's Um, a really hard, line to walk like you want to be considered a luxury brand but yes you can't just make people want to spend more for your products yeah it's it's something you kind of have to earn Mm -hmm. over time so yeah all right let us know in the live chat uh if any of you guys have pre-ordered the pixel or pixel xl or if you plan to and what color by the way that blue like the leaked photos were of a navy blue, I feel like, and then all of a sudden the real one was like <laughs> yeah, you see electric it. blue. Electric blue, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, like in renders, it's all about the lighting, and since it's like a, a, a like reflective, it, it depends on the light source hitting it. And we saw this with like the gold Nexus last year. Like sometimes it looked, I feel like in most lighting, the gold Nexus actually looked more pinkish, and that's what like ultimately kind of bothered me about it. But like with this phone, it's in regular light it's incredibly vibrant because it's like it's just like reflecting all that and it just looks so electric (laughs) so electric it's very very bright Uh, definitely not a toned down muted blue or navy blue like we thought it was going to be all right uh so moving on from the pixel phones there were a few other things that they showed off and we knew all about those as well um google home we finally got Official price, which is one twenty nine, uh, it's going to be shipping in like a month, I guess. Um, you guys got to test it a little bit, Chris. What did you think of it? It was pretty cool. It actually it worked like extremely consistently. I thought it was going to be like, I'm sorry, I did not hear that, or like you know, just weird things. We were kind of giving it stuff that it would know. Um, and there there were a few times where like Rob was like, play something, you know, like a Beyonce and it would play like the music and not on the TV, even though he said like, I don't remember what he, he yeah, there was a, in the video you guys did. There was one thing where he was like, uh, show me a soup recipe on the TV. And it wasn't working because you're supposed to say, play me. Yes. A soup recipe on the TV. Yes. So there, and I thought there. that was kind of lame because like, I mean, it's all about natural, the natural way that you speak. And if you have to say like specific keywords like that, it kind of loses some of that. That is why I hate voice anything. That was a lot of the <laughs> problems that the Connect, when it released with the X2, like it's a specific set of commands and people aren't um, using work. Yeah. yeah. It has I, to be natural to the way you talk. It, it and, has and to Google, be. 
Google knows this stuff. I mean, they have their natural language things and they got all the like, you know, information and their, you know, with Google search and stuff, you don't have to like really use specific phrases when searching on Google. You can kind of just type some things and they know you can misspell something and they know what you meant to type. Um, just things like that. And I feel like that's what they should do with the voice, the voice stuff. If Once they hit that level, which I'm sure they will, um, since this is still all very early and it's using Google Assistant and all that, uh, it'll it'll be a lot better. But um, from what we we did, we used it and stuff, and it was it was pretty pretty impressive. If you can get it to tie into like a lot of your smart devices, uh, it's just it's it's neat. I'm, I'm actually really excited to try it, but we'll see. Yeah, the integration was pretty good. Um, I do like how it you know works with your Chromecast and. Um, they announced some like uh, smart things is one of the ones that it works with a few home automation things. Um, yeah. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. cool. Um, my thing was they, um, they, they showed off what was it the, well, I guess you can't really show it off, but they also announced it was a Google Wi-Fi, which is like these little Wi-Fi thing extenders, basically. It's a mesh network. You put them throughout your house. Yeah. And it yep. extends your Wi-Fi coverage and make sure everything's covered. I wish that they would have just announced maybe like a like I feel like Google Home should have included that inside of it or something. Um I think it's kind of weird that they're just selling those like by themselves. You can buy one, you can buy two. I think they want OnHub to be your main router and then you'll just use the Google Wi-Fi as a mesh connection. Yeah. Or yeah, even then like they should sell an OnHub with one of those things like as a bundle for like pretty cheap or something. Um well, yeah. They serve different purposes, though. Like, I mean, the OnHub, most people only need the OnHub. Like, most people don't live in a place big enough where you need to, like, spread out Wi-Fi. Um, but you can buy just the one Wi-Fi or the one Google Wi-Fi. Like, you don't have to buy multiple to spread out. Yeah, the one is, like, and it's a little pricey, but 129 I think, for, like, the single. Um, and then they have, like, the two-pack or three-pack. I'm pretty sure that is cheaper than the OnHub, though just the single one yeah but i yeah it is but you would need to still you still need a wireless you know router and all that stuff to get it going no that is the router that is the wireless router yeah i thought it was just the extenders like it's just no, the... no, 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 no. It, it can extend it can connect to more than one but yeah. it is the router so i don't need my wireless router i just need one of those things yeah that would be that yes. would be your router Oh, <laughs> that's kind of cool. I was literally talking to Rob about this, and I was like, that's kind of lame. Like, because you still need to buy, like, a wireless router, and all that stuff gets really expensive. But, oh, okay. Well, then shoot. But let's buy a couple of Google Wi-Fis. So how does OnHub fit in, then? Why would you want to buy an OnHub if you can just get Google Wi-Fi? OnHub is also a router, but that's just, that's more of a traditional router, where you just have one router that you set in one spot of your house, and then it, you know covers your whole house just like a regular old router oh okay yeah maybe i will get the google the google wi-fi thing because i mean we, i have a small apartment but i can't our router is in like the opposite corner of like our bedroom and it just it never it's like barely we get like one little bar of wi-fi in there so like that would be pretty awesome to give it a shot that's cool yeah um what was the other thing oh chromecast ultra is just basically a Chromecast that does 4K. Yeah. And it's HDR, 4K, it's faster Ethernet processor. Port. Oh, yeah. It has an Ethernet port, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah, and I think there was a way... Uh, I can't remember. I think one of the old the old Chromecast, there was a way to get Ethernet in there, but you needed like an adapter or something weird to do it. But yeah, I guess it's it kind of Ethernet, the Ethernet port, built port built into the power cord, so I signal could stream 4K. Yeah. So that's cool. So I guess the question I'll uh, pose each of us to wrap this up uh, of everything that they showed off. The verdict. <laughs> uh, what are you going to buy, if anything? Chris? I have a 4K TV, so I need a 4K Chromecast. That's the one thing that's kind of bothering about my Chromecast right now. So probably that. Google Home. Uh, I don't know. I'm not completely sold on it. Even like, yeah, I'm not completely sold on Google Home. So not Google Home. Um, and then a small pixel for sure. I think that was it, right? Oh, the VR, the little VR headset. Oh, right. We forgot to talk about that. The <laughs> Daydream View, it's called, right? 
Yeah. It's like a VR headset made out of sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> it really so you, is. You can go I, jogging with it. You can take it you know, in the neighborhood. Let's go for a walk with it. <laughs> <laughs> did you try uh, it on? Because it does look like actually really comfortable. I didn't. It was like so crowded and packed. Rob got to play around with it and stuff, but I didn't get a chance to. But um, he said it's super light, like way lighter than the Oculus um, or the, the Gear VR. I'm sorry. Uh, so that's it's got that going for it um it felt i wouldn't say it felt cheap but it felt it felt very much like a gear vr just smaller lighter uh didn't have any buttons and then just covered in this like premium sweatpant material (laughs) premium sweatpants um but it it looks interesting um i feel like rob his whole thing was that it wasn't quote unquote immersive enough for him so that's why he was like, ah, I would rather just get like a, you know, one of the more expensive VR headsets or something. And it's like, okay, I guess maybe. I think it's nice though to have like options because, yes. you know, not everyone wants the hardcore Oculus Rift or HTC Vive. Like some people, you know, just want like something a little bit better than Google Cardboard. <laughs> exactly. And that's exactly what this is. It straps on your head. It just goes around. It doesn't have to mess up your hair. It just goes around the sides. Um, it's nice and light, and it's 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 Android compatible. So like unlike the Gear VR and stuff, which only works for Samsung devices, this is gonna work on everyone's everyone's Android device, which is pretty neat. And I mean, apparently Google signed some deals and stuff, and they got some cool exclusive games coming out for it, and you know, YouTube and Netflix and all that fun stuff. So that'll be interesting. Like, I kind of want to try it the next time I get on a plane or something, just strap it on my head. Lean back and just watch a little movie or something. Looks pretty neat. Ashley, what about you? What are you most interested in? Um, I actually pre-ordered a Google Home already. Like I was excited about that when they showed it has 4K Chromecast support, so we really need Google's dongle. And I've got a big 6P. I don't care about the phones. <laughs> yeah, I think um, of everything, I probably, I don't know if I'm going to buy it, but I'm definitely the most interested in the Google Home. I'm going to wait and see like some of the early reviews and see what people think about that. Think yeah. about it. But that's That's probably the thing I'm the most interested in. Like, I mean, I, I get the, the Google Home. Like, because some people are really crazy about the Amazon Echo and things. But, like, I I use Google services uh, for, like, pretty much everything they offer. So, I, Google Home sounds like it would be a lot more useful than, say, like, an Amazon Echo. So, I mean, if I had to buy one, an Amazon Echo or a Google Home, I would definitely go Google Home. But um, I'm just not... See, sure. I was... I think her audio cut out. Amazon, I would rather have... Oh shoot, she's done. She's gone. She's lagging a little bit. Yeah. Um, so we got a couple of questions here in the live chat that have to do with some of the Google stuff. Um, someone asked, "Will Pixel Launcher hit the Google Play Store?" Um, actually, just wrote an article about that yesterday. They, right now, they're not. It's not going to, but they are considering bringing it to more devices. So, as of right now, it's just one of those exclusive Pixel things. Yes, just like Google Now Launcher was for like you know Nexus devices initially. Um, it, it it'll I I will put money on that you will probably see it eventually. Maybe if not so much that, but you'll see some of those features like roll into the Google Now Launcher or something. I don't know. <laughs> Someone said, uh, "Chris, do you not read Android or Fandroid? <laughs> they made an article about it working with OnHub." Yeah, we did have an article about that, and I forgot to mention that. The Google Wi-Fi, it can uh, connect to the OnHub. Yeah, that that part I know. But like yeah. I was saying, like with... Um, you don't need the OnHub. You yeah, can you don't use need it the OnHub. the OnHub. I didn't, I didn't yeah. know the little tiny thing was its own little... Th- it's all you needed was a little, a little yeah. guy. So I thought, yeah. Ashley, are you with us? Can you hear me? For now, yes. <laughs> okay, we will continue. <laughs> um, all right, so one thing that they did not mention in the event 
Andromeda. Dude, people were uh, upset. Um, <laughs> we were, because that was kind of a thing that was supposed to be the big rumor thing. And then Hiroshi Lock- Lockheimer, the guy that, you know, the head of Android, was tweeting that everybody, like, you know, October 4th, people will remember this date as, like, a huge, you know, big thing. <laughs> it was going to be a really big deal. Yeah. Um, and, and people immediately was like, I don't know. I feel like you kind of, you should undersell yourself, not oversell. So when you said something like that, people were like, holy crap, it's going to, it's going to be something so huge. It's got to be Andromeda, uh, which was like the rumored Android and Chrome merging into each other. Yeah. Uh, which we've heard about for a long time. And yeah. apparently like they're testing it on the X- Nexus nine already right now. And like mm-hmm. everyone's freaking out. And it's not, it's not even a, as big of a deal for Android users as it is for, for Chrome users. I feel like it's, it's, it's really huge if you're, you know, you love Chromebooks and Chrome and all that, but for Android, it's like, what is it? What does it bring to Android? Really nothing like seamless updates, quick Google updates. I don't, I don't even know what the draw would be, but Yep, nothing. Not even a peep. In fact, Hiroshi never even, he was never even on stage. He never went on stage at all to talk about anything Android related. This was all about Google's products. Yeah, he really did like that tweet. <laughs> I, when he tweeted it the first time, you know, I, I made a tweet about it. I was like, this is pretty much the definition of hype. You better live up to it. Yeah. And then what did they announce? <clears throat> Just a couple of uh, standard Android phones. Some Google, Google products, some phones <laughs> and stuff. Um, and I feel like that's kind of like the Android communities. Like they're so, they're so fanboyish, but they're like, they'll turn on you in an instant. So like if you don't live up to the expectation, like they're the first ones that are going to, you know, rip you apart and tear you down. So, um, that's And that's so really that's what, what the leaks, um, I, I feel like the leaks really create that because... People, for some reason, people, even though we like know everything about devices before they're announced, I feel like people still have this small hope that there's going to be something amazing and that they're yeah. going to be surprised. Right. But then the events come and exactly like we think, everything is just shown that we've already seen. And then people are like, okay, this is stupid. <laughs> and it's, it's like year after year, device after device. All this stuff is leaked ahead of time. I don't, I can't even think of there ever been a time where they had like oh and one more thing and they just really surprised people like it just doesn't it doesn't happen the only thing that that they usually never leak is pricing and availability and that's the only thing that i think manufacturers can kind of keep you know still hidden um and google kind of i think maybe some people were kind of holding on to that like maybe the big surprise is going to be that these are super cheap or you can trade in your old nexus and just get a free pixel or something, you know, but no, not at all. <laughs> all right. Um, so that pretty much wraps up our Google and Pixel stuff. Um, we did have one non-Pixel Google story to talk about this week. Uh, the Note 7, a replacement Note 7, caught fire on a plane. So that's that's not what Samsung wants Uh-oh. to happen right now. It's deja vu. I'm absolutely sure it was a replacement. They, yeah, there was pictures like um, the Verge wrote the story about it first, I think, and like they, they had a picture of the box with the black little bot, uh, the black square on it, which signifies that it's a replacement. Well, you know, a few weeks ago, I wrote a story about a guy in China that said he bought a replacement one and had it explode, and everyone was like, "Oh no, that's just some weird Chinese yeah. thing that happened." But <laughs> now it's happened here. That's just a well, China thing. It is yeah. weird because like phones, ex- you know, quote unquote exploding, you know, is not like a new thing. It has happened to a lot of phones in the past. And so maybe if there wasn't this recall, something like this, we would just brush off and be like, oh, yeah, you know, that's crazy story, whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> now that we have all this like backstory, it's like, oh, no, it's happening again. Yeah. So is it is it just a random fluke that happens with every phone or is this still like showing evidence that maybe Samsung has a bigger problem on their hands. Like it's some, it's something else that they overlooked or the fishiest part of the story is the guy said his phone <laughs> was powered off. I don't buy it. 
who actually turns their phones off on planes? Not for a second. I'm, if if they were like, and if anyone has a Note Seven, you know, power it down. I'd be like, Biatch, this is the new Note Seven. I ain't gotta do shit. You put it in airplane mode and <laughs> you go about your business. That's what everybody does. I yeah. feel like. Yep. Like, cool. Yeah, I'm not doing that. And I'll just keep listening to my music. But, I mean, this guy claims, maybe that's, I mean, that's probably the, the fishiest part of the story. But um, apparently, like, what was it, The Verge? They updated the article. They, they checked out the IMEI and, you know, checked out, bing, thumbs up. It was clear and good, or supposed to be, until it exploded. Um, well, I, I guess it doesn't explode. Someone was really pissed off about how we keep using the word explode when it's just erupts into flames. It's There's the easiest difference. way to describe it. There's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so for Throwback Thursday this week, um, since the Nexus line is officially dead, I thought we would just talk about the Nexus 1 for a little bit. Aw, did that phone ever explode? Did you get any exploding? It probably one? did somewhere. <laughs> Because if it didn't, I don't want nothing to win. So I never had a Nexus One. I assume you did, Chris. What about no, you, actually? I didn't. Oh, Chris didn't. I had one either. So no. none of us uh, actually had one. That's crazy. I, I had no. a G1, and then at that time, I was making my little G1 videos, and then a Nexus One came out, and I was just a poor, poor kid just working part-time at my parents' office. Didn't have enough to afford a Nexus One, and I was really upset about it because I was just like, "Dream phone." Yeah, I had the, I had the HTC Droid Eris at the time, and I remember this was the first like Android phone that I was really like psyched about. After that, um, and I was on Verizon, and I vividly remember like they said coming yes. to Verizon later, and so like I was on like some email list, you know, to get notified about it and like <laughs> all this stuff, and like it just never happened. <laughs> So yeah. I never was able to to get it, but I was so I remember watching like YouTube reviews and unboxings, and I was super jazzed about it, and never got to have one. That's just it's Google's long tumultuous past with Verizon. They they don't have a good history with them, and it sucks because I remember the yeah they were like it's going to be Verizon. They're going to have a Verizon variant, and it just people were very upset. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is a Pixel going to change? Yeah, we actually, we didn't even mention that. It's exclusively sold, I mean, in stores at least, uh, at carrier Verizon stores. in yeah. the U.S. You can buy it online and use it from on like any carrier pretty much, but uh, I, Verizon's I just, selling it in stores. I feel like if you're a manufacturer who's struggling to, to make sales, you sign a deal with Verizon for exclusivity. Or if you're a new smartphone brand trying to... <laughs> trying to you know make some money you sign a deal with verizon exclusivity so it's it's just funny how that always works out it sucks but i mean i guess it's the cool part is that you can still finance the phone through the google uh google store yeah google's offering their own little financing thing which is nice so i actually don't think it's as big of a deal as a lot of people do like you know people just people buy stuff online nowadays you can buy it from like four or five different places online. You're not stuck with Verizon. Yeah. I don't think it's that big of an issue. Uh, I wouldn't even call it an exclusivity. It, it It's really just like a brick and mortar exclusivity. Yeah. I think it's just, a, it's it's for a yeah. phone to succeed. And this is where people are really pissed off because they want it on team. They want it on every carrier. They're like, well, why didn't Google just offer it on every carrier? And it's, it's I think it's obvious that they, they couldn't. <laughs> they needed... They needed a carrier to, to offer it, you know, and then Verizon was like, here's a bag of money. We'll help you with like advertising. They need Verizon's advertising dollars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But do they, though? Because they have been advertising the crap out of it on the on their own. Yeah, I mean, any any little bit helps. That's um, true. And they, yeah, they, they want it in a, a carrier store and Verizon's like, we'll do it. So back to the next one had a trackball. I had a cool 3D app drawer. Do you remember that? Yes, that was my favorite. I was so upset when they eventually got rid of that. Like, I was heartbroken. You don't even know. I wonder if you could still use that as, like, your app drawer animation in Nova Launcher or something. I'm going to email Kevin Barry and I'm going to tell him, dude, why don't you add the freaking... Because I remember the third-party launchers, like ADW, they like added it in, and I thought it was the coolest thing. <laughs> That's what I want to see. I want to see a, the old-school Google widget 
I want the Google search widget and I want that old app drawer, the little square one. Man, that was Back awesome. in the day. What, what was the megapixels on that thing? I know like the, I was surprised to learn it only had four gigabytes of internal storage and I'm like, man, can't believe we got by back then. Yeah, let's do a let's do a quick rundown of the specs, and then we'll move on. Um, so it had an AMOLED display. It was three point seven inches, four eighty <laughs> by eight hundred, not even seven twenty p. Super high res. Uh, it had a one point gigahertz snap uh, processor, yeah. which I think we talked about once in the past. That was like the crown With- jewel of processors at the time. One yes. one gigahertz. Uh, 512 megabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, uh, if you had a SD card, that is. Uh, five megapixel camera, no front camera. <laughs> oh, existed. The bat- yeah, the battery was 1,400 milliamp hours, so, yep. 1,400, wow. That is what you got in a smartphone. That was that was the top of the line specs for a smartphone in 2010. The first Nexus. All right, let's move on to our wins and fails of the week. Uh, so mine is going to be a, a combination win and fail. And it's this thing that I have here. Uh, it's in this little cool case. This is called the Braggy Dash. And it's actually wireless earbuds. Ooh, just like the Apple AirPods. Uh, so I'm I'm actually writing a story slash review thing about these right now because basically I wanted to know what it would be like to actually use Bluetooth earpods as your only headphones, like if you didn't have a headphone jack. So I reached out to these guys and they sent me a pair of these. They were nice. Um, so I've been using these for a couple weeks and they're pretty cool. Like. I've never really used wireless uh, headphones before, uh, at least like, you know, with my phone. And it is really nice just to like pop these out. You pop them in your ear and you have nothing. There's no, there's no wire going behind your neck. There's no wire going to your pocket. Uh, They're completely independent and just floating in your ear. You kind of feel like a secret agent, (laughs) but it's pretty neat. And like, going for a run, going for, you know, riding your bike, mowing the lawn, whatever. It's, it's pretty cool to just not have anything tangled or anything like that. Um, and the battery life has been pretty good. Uh, just like the AirPods, this case actually charges them. So you charge this case and then when you put the, um, earbuds in the case, it can charge them, uh, five times. So I've actually charged this once and it has like kept these um charged for almost two weeks holy cow <laughs> yeah so that, that's that's pretty cool i had i'm like i don't wear them as oh. long as probably some people would like i think the longest i've ever worn them is two hours straight but usually i'm just wearing Three. them for like yeah go ahead um it's like if you were running yeah the one thing that i don't like, like about them would- is uh they aren't and this is just like a uh, year by year basis, I guess. For me, at least, they don't feel great in my ears. They, they're they kind of itchy if I wear them a long time. And like, oh, they'll slowly get looser and looser. And so I'm kind of worried that they're going to fall out when I'm wearing them and doing something like running or biking. Yeah. Uh, and like that kind of goes into my fail part of it where wireless earbuds i don't know if they're ever going to be perfect because they're always going to fall out you know like even if they fit your ear perfectly headphones just fall out sometimes and when you have completely independent earbuds and they fall out you know if you're riding your bike down the street and they fall out and get you know drove over by a car or you're like on a mountain bike trail and they like get lost in the brush or something or you just step on it yourself or whatever, like that's annoying. So yeah. they're, they're like supposed to be more convenient, but in some ways they're less convenient than wireless he- or wired headphones. Um, um, but I would say, chains that yeah. Librarians wear, people are making those for wireless headsets. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 
And like this company, they actually sell a thing that you can get that connects the two behind your neck. But it's like that kind of defeats the purpose of wireless, doesn't it? A, a little bit, I'd say. A little bit, yeah. So I think for me, um, the perfect set would be the ones that just have the wire that go behind your neck. I think I would prefer that over the completely independent earbuds. But it was very interesting to give these a try. They're really well designed, really well made. Um, they have a bunch of cool features where you can just like tap. It's like basically a touch screen on them. So you can just like tap it to make it do something like pause, play. Um, you ha- There's like a thing where you can have it let background noise come in. So you're not like completely deaf to the world around you, which is pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're interested in checking these out, they're called the Braggy Dash. Uh, if you want to get in Apple's future, if you have the courage... <laughs> have the courage check these out yeah just put tape put tape over your headphone port <laughs> put some super glue in there fill it up yep you don't need it <clears throat> all right chris what do you got uh my wins and fails Let's see what do i have oh my win for the week i know is that what we're doing yeah. yeah pokemon go here's a pokemon go update it's actually pretty huge this time or a pretty good one um if anyone's still playing i'm still playing (laughs) you can uh there's these normally when you play the game and you catch a specific type of pokemon they give you these little medals which are just kind of fun pointless medals like oh you caught 200 rattatas you're the rat master master splinter or something and it would be like this basically yeah a little achievement you know it's just kind of like oh thanks great wonderful but now they actually mean something because uh depending on the type the metal type or the type of Pokemon that you're catching to get that medal, um, you will increase your catch rate for those types of Pokemon. So um, some people apparently have a ton of Jinxes where they live, and they're like, there's so many Jinxes here, I don't even catch them anymore. They just bother me. But if you were to keep catching the Jinxes and you get a medal for Ice types, you would be able to catch a Lapras a lot quicker, um, or at least increase the catch rate should you ever encounter a Lapras. Um, since there's only like four or five different ice type Pokemon in the game and Lapras is one of them. So that's pretty awesome. Um, pretty huge. I haven't gotten the update yet, so I haven't been able to play around with it. And I don't know if it works like retroactively. So I don't know if I, I would assume so. I, I'm hoping really badly because I've been playing for a while and I have a lot of medals. Otherwise and, it would have to completely reset your metal count, which I doubt it would do that. Yeah, that's true. Once the update hits, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna go into my medals and I'm gonna look because when you tap on them, it shows you you know plus one catch rate or plus two or whatever. Um, so I need to check that out. But, but pretty excited about that. Um, even though my Pokedex is almost completely filled, but you know, on the rare occasion you run into a Lapras or something, it'll, it'll be helpful. Um, and there's nothing more frustrating than a stupid Pokemon like dashing on you. It's just so so annoying. Um, <laughs> The, my fail for the week is going to be the fact that the Pixel camera didn't really mop the floor with the iPhone 7 like I thought it would. We did a quick camera test with the two phones, and um, surprisingly so, as, you know, as much as Google made a big old deal about you know, it being the highest-rated smartphone camera on DxOMark's um, ratings and all that stuff, uh, which still only scored like an 89, so yeah, it's the highest by like one point. Um, and keep in mind the DXO Mark ratings, and we kind of talked about this a long time ago, but they factor in a variety of things. So it's not just image quality, you know, it's dynamic range, it's detail, it's video, you know, stability. Um, so like if you have a, a smartphone that takes really crappy video, but the best photos on the planet, it's going to probably get an average, average score. So um, it didn't, yeah, I was kind of a little disappointed to see that, but um especially considering Google said that the Pixel camera by default shoots in HDR+, which on the Nexus 6P, Nexus 5X, Nexus 6, HDR+, is the bee's knees. It can, like, just it completely... It can take shots that you normally couldn't do on any other smartphone, whether it's low light or anything, and, like, it gets rid of all the noise. It's just so amazing. And when I heard about that on, you know, on stage when Google announced it, I was, like, so hyped, but... I think they're just using a different kind of camera tech or something because the dynamic range was a little bit better than the iPhone 7, but nothing too crazy. Um, and I didn't get a chance to test it in low light, which I guess we'll do later. But 
uh, whenever the review units come. But that's going to be, I guess, my fail. Is it wasn't that much better. Because the Galaxy S7, Galaxy Note 7, it completely creams the iPhone 7 still. I mean, like, in every, like, area of the camera. Like, it's just so much better. Um, oh, and the Pixel cameras don't have OIS either, which was a little disappointing. But what? It is, it is what it is. So. All right, Ashley, what do you have? I've got two fails this week, actually. Um, I really like the really blue phone. I think it's an awesome color, something that you don't really see. But I hate that it has a white face. Like, why is the whole phone not blue? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> That's, that part <laughs> kind of bothered me a lot, honestly. Yeah, I, think I saw I would that. Have instantly bought it or gone for that color if it would have been completely blue. Yes, if it was completely blue. Um, my other fail we've already kind of discussed, but uh, Daydream View, leggings for your head. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's awesome that it's made out of sweatpants. You know what? It's awesome that it's a light headset and that it's an easy way to get into VR without having to be exclusive to Samsung's ecosystem, but it looks kind of silly. More silly than any VR headset, though. I mean, they all look pretty cool. Those are are like futuristic. You expect that from a VR headset. This is just, you know those ostrich things that you stick your head in? It looks like one of those. I thought I thought it was when he because on stage it was really funny because he announced you know like oh and it's got this premium we wrapped it in premium you know textile whatever and then like everyone was just kind of looking at each other like what okay <laughs> why <laughs> why like, there's just no good reason to just I don't think they chose very good colors either the extra colors were white and crimson mm-hmm. I think they called the white snow yeah the white was kind of an off white and like had like the brown insides and then the crimson one wasn't even like red and like playful it was like very here's my question why would you have a vr headset that's red but you're releasing a phone that is really blue <laughs> red and yeah blue go good together <laughs> i don't know yeah they should have just matched it with all the colors they had on the phone or something yeah there well, you go. i disagree with you guys i think the gray one looks awesome i love that heather awesome. fabric look i think that's cool I mean, you're going to take it, you know, running with you with your wireless headphones and <laughs> you don't got to go running, Chris. You have a virtual world. Dude, I'm going to wear it with my completely gray sweatsuit, gray sweat shirt or gray sweatpants, gray running shoes and my gray headset. They look awesome. And rubber gloves while you're eating. Your <laughs> yeah, those blue sweat. surgical gloves. I need to. I need to find something where they have. Because uh, when you go to uh, when I went to E3, the Oculus, they had these like you know like a surgical mask. They had those, but it was like cutouts for your eyes and your nose. Dude, the Daydream has that. I saw in reviews <laughs> you can pull out a thing and wash it. Oh, the the little thing rips out and yeah, you can wash it. It was okay, a Verge that's... video. I am freaking done. I'm sold. I'm 100% sold. Holy right, we just sold the first copy. Yeah. Oh man. All right. Uh, app picks. My app pick is going to be called Our Home. One word. Our. Our home. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> what did I say? Our. 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 Oh yeah. Sorry. Midwest coming out. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, Our home. Yeah, I just did it again. Uh, so anyway, this is an app for like you and people that live in your house uh kids significant others roommates whatever for keeping track of like doing chores and tasks like that um which sounds pretty boring but the cool part about this app is i think this would really be cool especially if you have kids is that you make tasks worth points and every time you complete a task you earn those points and then you can the parents can set up rewards. So oh. when you get to a certain amount of points, you unlock that reward. So maybe it's like going out to get ice cream or something like that. Um, and then I really like the reminder intervals in this app are really smart. So like you can set it up where tasks can rotate between different people. So maybe you do it, like maybe it's doing the dishes, for example you do it one day and then it will automatically know that you got, you take turns. And so then the oh, next time it will remind your significant other to do it and then it'll keep switching back and forth. Uh, and then you can also like set it up to be, so you don't have to like 
set it up. So say like mowing the lawn or something like that. You don't have to have it where like it's a reminder on a specific day every week. It's smarter than that. You can say, remind me a week after I actually complete the task. So say you don't do it on the, a specific day of the week, it will just always remind you a week after whenever you do do it. So kind of some cool smart features that I haven't seen before. And if you're into that sort of thing, you live with a bunch of people, you have kids, I think it would be worth checking out. It's called Our Home. I do. I do. This is great. Uh, I have an app pick and it's called Candid. Uh, so I don't know if you guys remember that app. I think it was called Whisper or Secret. One of those. Yeah. Where you basically, you know, it's got the little or post post secret. It's it's kind of one of those. It's like a social network uh, that shows you your friends. Those those apps, by the way, got taken down or they, you know, they just just went belly up. They died. They were a uh, cesspool. They were a cesspool of just complete crap talking and it was terrible but uh candid is a little bit different it's i mean much of the same but you can follow specific uh, i forget what they call them um i guess like groups yeah so pretty much follow, groups follow like a, an android group or you know local people that are local to your area and then you know kind of branch out from there so you can kind of see topics based on that or like post based on the general topic uh, my friend is all about this app. He keeps telling me to download it. I finally did and was kind of like, this is just stupid. I don't I don't really feel the need to vent that much. And that's what I have Twitter for. I vent on Twitter all the time. So, um, <clears throat> But if you're into that, and some people, I guess, really need an outlet and they can do that and just read anonymous postings. Um, it does connect to your Facebook or you can have it connect, I believe, to your phone number. So that it'll show you posts from people you know, but it's anonymous, so you don't know if it really You, you is. don't even have to do that. Yeah, um, you don't you even have that. to connect to Facebook. This was actually I, in one of my um, top apps of the week last week. So oh. I tried it out for a little bit too. Yeah. It's basically like Reddit, except you can localize it if you want. Cool. Yeah. Um, and you can use it to, yeah, like I said, just vent, vent your frustrations. He, my friend that told me about it loves it because he loves, um, I guess he's voting for Trump and, you know, whatever, politics aside, he loves to be able to vent and just talk about po- politics and all this dumb political stuff. And he just, yeah. You just turned off everyone from downloading this app because they're like, <laughs> oh God, there's politics in this app. <laughs> well, no, there's a <laughs> specific group you can follow, which I, by the way, did not. I was like, no, I'm not gonna freaking read all that crap so yeah i just did not follow that group specifically but it's called candid it's free on the google play store ashley um my app is really simple i have a problem where i'll mute my phone for this podcast and then i will not turn it back on and so i'll miss calls miss texts miss all kinds of things Mm -hmm. it's called volume timer so when you mute your phone it pops up a little screen that says how long do you want to mute your phone for and you can set it to any length of time. And after that, it will resume the volume settings that you had before. Oh, nice. Yeah. This sounds like a feature that's kind of built into Android, though, I think. Is it? Uh, not really. There's, like, when you mute, I think it's on, maybe it's only on Nexus devices or something, or Lollipop or Marshmallow. One of them, it was like you... Oh. You could, you could, like, have it be priority for a certain amount of time or yeah. do not disturb for a certain amount of time. Do not yeah. disturb, and then you use the little thing to... But I think it goes by hours or something, so it's, like, one hour, Yeah, this hours. one you could set to, like, 15, 20, 30-minute intervals if you need to. Oh, see, that's nice, yeah. Yeah. The fine-tuning. Yeah, that is nice. All right, we have three questions, uh, email questions this week. Uh, our email address is podcast at fandroid.com. Uh, first one is from Alan Eurista. Eurista. Uh, he says, since I highly doubt Xiaomi will release this awesome phone outside of China, I was wondering if I buy it and use it on AT&T, will I still only get HSBA Plus or would it work on LTE? Uh, he's talking about the Xiaomi My 5S Plus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think it would work. But it, I mean, it's, it's a possibility. China, like Asian bands are really different than like North American, European bands. So like if it was an international phone, like, you know, Europe, international, whatever, I would say, yeah, go for it. You're going to be fine. But um, since it's Chinese, it's it's tough to say. You would literally have to look into 
the supported frequency bands and see if they work with ours here. But generally, I I'm just it's never a good idea to buy a Chinese phone and just cross your fingers that it works in the U.S. Um, because there's always like even if it did work on like HSPA plus, you know, LTE might not work or it might only work with one LTE band and not, you know, the two or three that that carrier uses and um, Wi-Fi calling and stuff like that. It's just, it's too much, too much guesswork. <laughs> and you'll never be sure if you ever run out of reception, you'll be like, is it because of my phone doesn't support this network or does this network suck? I can't, I can't tell. But yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it. I would say wait till they release the U.S. model if that ever happens. Our second question is from David Hollingshead. Um, he s mentions a few things that we've already talked about, um, but one of the things that we didn't touch on, he says, uh, "Why did Google put the fingerprint scanner on the back of the Pixel when they could have already put it on the power button or the big empty bottom lip where a nice fat speaker should also be? Now I'd have to keep lifting it off the desk to unlock it easily." Um, that's, I think, a personal preference thing. I actually like the fingerprint scanners on the back. I know some people don't. Um, but mm -mm. the big lip that he mentions, mm -mm. that definitely would have been a good use of that lip because there's just nothing there. It's just a big blank <laughs> chin. So big old honking chin. Is yeah. it as bad in person as it looks in pictures? No, not so much. I was playing around with it, the small one, and I mean, I was able to still reach, like, you know, the notification thing, and then you have the little, you can swipe the back button, the fingerprint sensor to bring your notifications down too. So that was a nice little touch. Um, I'm sure that'll work a lot better on the big, the big phone since you can't even reach it. But it, it didn't really look that bad. But I, I don't know. It's it is substantial, and the whole phone could have been a lot smaller. They wanted to shrink it. I honestly think they should have put the fingerprint sensor on the front, but like you said, it's subjective. It's a matter of preference. Um, and then the other thing he says is he just closed out the email and says, I don't know why Google is so shy to take some leaps in usability or market with their custom designed phones. Maybe we just have to keep learning incrementally the hard way, or maybe they were forced into all these things trying to make a premium phone with nitpicky carriers. Uh, then our last question is from Tony Levi. Le Leve, don't know how to say his name. Uh, he just wanted to ask, what kind of apps do we prefer? Do you usually have the app drawer full of different apps you've tried or news or then, or do you prefer to keep everything quite minimal with fewer apps to find them easier? I feel like I have looked at every single app at the Play Store, but I never install anything because I don't like the clutter that comes with having a lot of apps. Um, I... I do have a lot of apps, but I definitely will go through from time to time and delete ones that I don't use. What about you guys? I, I do that also, but if I install an app that I don't need, I usually end up going through and uninstalling like 20 or 30 of them at a time. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just a hoarder. I have like 160 that like, like I have to download I need to have on my phone over, I think it's about 160 now or 145, I guess, depending on what phone model it is. But there's, there's a lot. The only ones I ever don't or I do clear out when I get a new phone and I don't bother re-downloading are the games. And it's like, if I wasn't playing it to begin with and I, right. I can't remember it off the top of my head, then I, I probably shouldn't be playing it anyway. I, don't, I will say if you don't like the way the default app drawer is, you should try Action Launcher 3 because it's a lot more like Windows Phone where you just pull out and it gives you a list of all your apps and then you can select alphabetically which one you want to go to. Yeah, I yeah. think that's an option in um, like Nova Launcher too. You can have it yeah. organized and just, like that. And just having like a good folder system. Um, yep. I think some of them you can even put folders in the app drawer if you don't want to clutter up your home screen so that's good too but I mean I have folders for for everything <laughs> and I pretty much always know where everything's at so not really too I bad. definitely will like I kind of survival of the fittest in my app drawer like if I download an <laughs> app that does something better than a uh, app I previously used I will like instantly uninstall oh, yeah, for sure. I'll just be like you lost you're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That's going to wrap things up for this week. Um, you can, like I said, email us podcast at fandroid.com. We're also on Twitter at mobile roarcast. 
Uh, and you can subscribe to the audio version of the podcast on Google Play Music, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, iTunes, and whatever your favorite podcast app may be. Uh, and then we are on Twitter. Chris is at GamerCore. Ashley is at Overlord Roar. And I am at Tall Schmo. And we will see you guys next time. Later. Bye.